principalities can work through personalities, even apostles, sold out Christians, and people that just rock. You know, it can happen. It can happen. We need to be humble. What am I talking about? You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And when that happens, you will probably suffer persecution at the hands of people that say they love you. Jesus, unfortunately, was not accepted by his own family in some cases. A lot of people didn't believe him. They said, hey, you know, if you're doing all these miracles, don't you want to be seen of men? Job's wife, you know, she's like, hey, curse God and die. He's like, foolish woman. You know, should we just receive good and not evil also from the Lord? And then after his trial, he was blessed on the latter end. People are asking me, why am I being rejected? Why is why is the world not like me? Well, the world hated Jesus, and it's going to hate you. Be the few, homeboy, you know? So I wanted to talk about some of the things that, that we may kind of gloss over in Scripture. And it's, it's something to meditate upon, Um Something that might kind of blow your mind a little bit, might kind of make you a little bit uncomfortable, but it's the Word of God, and if I make you uncomfortable to get you closer with Jesus, so be it. I believe in extreme fidelity to the Word of God and extreme fidelity to the Spirit of God, which wrote the Bible, right? We like to think, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is the Word, and we need to understand the difference between Jesus being the Word and the text in the Bible. He's the author of that text. Amen. So, you know, I always refer to how the Apostle Saul had the Bible memorized. Saul Paul, and he was persecuting Jesus with under the authority, under his perceived authority of that text. He didn't have a relationship with Jesus. That's why I'm always saying let's have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Now here, I'm going to talk about people that had a relationship with Jesus or yeah, uh, you know that they had or they were New Testament believers at least. Uh, well, we're just going to go through them. Peter. Now, keep in mind, Peter was a chosen apostle, right? And Jesus had just said, "You know what? Blessed are you, for God revealed this to you. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed it to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, right?" And then he starts to explain about how he's going to go to the cross. Jesus explains how he's going to go to the cross. So so Peter, a chosen apostle, began to rebuke Jesus, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That doesn't sound like $65 million jets, Mercedes, and stuff like that. Another thing about Peter is, you know, just like Job, you know, God allowed the devil to, to tempt Job, to test Job uh, in his health and his finances in every area, right? And Job had faithfulness to God, but then Peter... It, we're having, we fast forward to the New Testament with Peter, and Jesus says, you know, does, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. And he didn't say, I rebuked the devil. He says, when you're restored, strengthen your brethren. You know? So, isn't that interesting? Even in the New Testament, Jesus, well, this is pre-cross, I understand, but Jesus allowed Peter to be tested. Amen? Do you understand that? So if if Jesus allows Peter to be tested, what does that say about me and you, right? Principalities work through personalities. And here we see that even Peter denied Jesus. Think about it. You know, let's, them who thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he fall. So we need to be humble in our estimation of our own faith with Jesus. Another person I want to talk about 
is Ananias. Remember Ananias and Sapphira. Now, this is a post-cross time. This is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is completely New Testament. This is after the Holy Spirit was given in Acts chapter 2. So here we have spirit-filled Christians, we believe, right? Um, Ananias and Sapphira. And then they held back a portion of the money. They were going to sell everything they had, lay it at the apostles' feet. And he was in the act of doing this. And in Acts 5, verse 3, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So these things happen in our heart. Jesus says, you know, if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. That starts by looking at her. So I'm always big on watching what we watch. What we watch comes into our brain or into our mind. We meditate upon it. And as we meditate upon it, it drops into our heart. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Ananias somehow got this trigger billboard of Satan idea to hold back a part of the price. It was greed. He may have had some greed. He may have had a covetousness issue. But I want you to understand that this is after Acts chapter 2. This is very close. It's Acts chapter 5, right? So the Holy Spirit has already been given on the earth. Then you remember even his wife, Sapphira, Ananias and Sapphira, they both conspired together uh, to keep back a portion. And I always wondered why. But the point I want to make here is if if Peter can be called Satan, can become an enemy of God, and Ananias and Sapphira after the Holy Spirit was given can lie to man and God inside the congregation, we need to be humble. Principalities can work through personalities. We need to be on guard. Guard our heart. Amen. Yeah, the last person I want to talk about, well, maybe not the last, but Judas. Judas was an apostle. Um, it says in the 12 disciples in Matthew 10, 1 through 4, And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon who's called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus and Labias, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So the names of the 12 apostles, Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 apostles. Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 apostles. Now I want that to sink in, right? Because later... Now, notice that Ananias and Sapphira, they had a little bit of greed, right? The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they had a deal with money. And then here we have Judas, an apostle, Matthew 26, 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted it for him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. And in Luke 22, verse 3, then it says, Then entered Satan into Judas. Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. The Bible emphatically says that Judas was one of the twelve. So I'm always talking about this open door. You know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We need to watch what our heart thinks. We need to guard our heart for out of, the, out of it flow the issues of life. You know, out of the heart flows uh, abortions, adulteries, murderers, thefts, fornications, and all that. What's in our heart matters, right? So in the, in the Bible says, I will hide the, your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. So one of the things that I'm, I'm working on in my thought life, I've been working on it quite some time, is that when my heart thinks, you know, that's that constant monologue that, that's with you throughout the day. That's who you are. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What I'm trying to do 
is continue in the Word. If I continue in the Word, then I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. So hide the Word in your heart and be on guard that if the, if the principality of the devil can get into Peter, Ananias, and Judas, what about us? Amen? Just think about those three people today. And even Satan. You know, <laughs> Satan! He was a, an archangel, and he, iniquity was found in him. He began to think in his heart, I will, I will, I will. As a matter of fact, I was just walking into my room a while ago, and I heard the five I wills of Lucifer in Isaiah chapter 14. He wanted to be like God, exalt himself above the Most High. So when we want to be seen of men, and when we want to uh, the, have power and money and prestige, that is something we need to crucify. Amen. God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.